Howdy dorks, week nine. So think back to realignment for a minute. And this, this was the week that when we start looking at some of the changes in districts and classifications, we were going, hmm, week nine, Franklin and Lorena. Hmm, week nine, Denton Ryan and Alito. Hmm, week nine, Refurio and Shiner. This week lived up to the hype not only just on the performances tonight, which we'll get to in a second, but the fact that going into this week, those matchups of perennial powerhouses, of district playing games, all of those boxes that we wanted checked absolutely came into fruition. And this week has been such an unbelievably fun week of Texas high school football, and it's not completely over yet, but we will hit you with some of the highlights and some of the top games. Um, China Spring holds on to beat Lorena 38 to 36 on a game winning field goal. This, this one was a lot of fun. China Spring is going to win this district now. China Spring, I think has solidified themselves as maybe the team to beat in 3A Division I. Cash McCollum is outstanding. Their receivers are outstanding, but this defense is what really got to me. Ryder Lambert playing for Stephenville is is back. We've seen massive improvement in the Stephenville defense the past couple of weeks. This was a team that Stephenville started off a little rough, but they came back and they were they're in their group. They're gelling right now. They're in a good spot. And China Spring came out there and said, hey, we're the new kids on the block, but welcome to our house. They brought them in. Tyler Beatty and his squad getting out the win. This China Spring team looked legit. Um, I think that Stephenville is also legit. I think that these are two teams that we can expect to see go far in the playoffs. But a very competitive game. China Spring continuing to uh, to find a way to win it. And it was a, a very big win for the Cougars down there. Let's talk about Shiner and Refurio. Usually, uh, we wouldn't be talking about this until December, right? Because it would be the regional final of Region 4 in district or in classification 2A Division 1, but they're in the same district this year, which means we get this twice, most likely. Something catastrophic, though, I feel like would have to happen to not see a rematch of this game. We, going into this game, said that the only surprising thing here would be the fact that if one team just absolutely blew the other one out of the water. That didn't happen, but Refurio did beat Shiner 38-25. to That's a pretty handled win right there. I, I said it on Football Friday, but I cannot remember, the. I don't think anyone can remember the last time that Shiner shows up to a game and they don't have the most lethal rushing attack on the field. This Refurio rushing attack is legit. Haas Haney, their quarterback, is outstanding at dropping dimes, but that is a hard-nosed runner. He had a real long one tonight um, to put them up pretty early. Elijah Bland is outstanding. Jordan King is outstanding. We saw how dominant this Refurio offensive line is tonight, being able to open up holes for those running backs to get through. But, you know, they they had an answer for Dalton Brooks this time. This was the first time that we've seen them have any sort of an answer for the Brooks brothers at all, you know, either of them. Now, obviously, with one of them, they're able to single in on him. But we will likely be seeing this matchup. Again, how much did Shiner hold back? How much revenge will Shiner be going afterwards? The fact that I feel like that Refurio won this game means big things for that potential regional final. Because in my mind, Refurio is not going to really feel deflated, obviously, at this point. I feel like if they had lost this one, it's gosh darn it, they have another one of the Brooks. We're just, it's, it might not be able to happen. Now they have that, but we might see an aggressively mad Dalton Brooks come the regional final. So this one really, really set up fun things for if that happens um, in December, which we think that it will. The Battle of the O. Roy O. Down in the RGV, it is Harlingen San Benito, the one that we actually flew back from the RGV this morning. Tepper and I did, but Matt Stepp and Ishmael Johnson got to stay down there for that one. Travis Buckner uh, with Bally was down there, so a whole slew of our crew was down there, um, and it ended up being a pretty good one. Uh, Harlingen pulls it out 37-21. to 21. That doesn't sound super close, but it was 17-0 Harlingen at halftime. We were looking around going, okay, like... 
got to pick something back up, but but anybody that we were talking to down there, they were like, hey, this game's nowhere close to over. The crowd is, is going to bring this back in, and that's exactly what happened. San Benito really started to get into their groove in the third quarter. It was the fourth quarter when Harlingen started to pull away, but Harlingen running back Isaiah Bell is outstanding. He is a legitimately good player down there in the Rio Grande Valley, and what they were able to do tonight was expose a San Benito defense that has only let up 34 points the previous seven games of the season. I mean, they were only letting up just over four points per game they exposed them it was quite impressive a huge win for coach Manny Gomez and his squad and just showing that there's another there's two other I mean both of them have potential to try to make some noise when the playoff comes around and then you have you look in 5a division one then you have PSJA North you have Edinburgh Vela this is a big year for the Valley and Harlingen really really stood up tonight um, in that 110th battle another matchup of reigning state champions now in the same district was Franklin and Lorena. Franklin pulls out the win 49 to 35 over Lorena. Lorena the defending 3A Division 1 state champs, Franklin the reigning 3A Division 2 and they said, "Hey guys, we're here. Welcome to the party." Bryson Washington was absolutely outstanding. The slot tee was operating on all cylinders, but you want to take a look at the scope of 3A Division 1 and you start going, "Man, I <laughs> you know, can who who is this going to run through and i think that franklin is showing we went wire to wire number one last year we went we're we're back and we're ready to go so franklin and outstanding when bryson washington is that dude somebody's going to have to muster up something to be able to stop him but lorena still looked really good um their quarterback looked really good he had three different passing touchdowns went nine for nine in the first half so Still a great team, just had no answer for that rushing attack from Franklin. And then finally, a game that might have been flying under your radar up here uh, being played in the DFW. It was Midlothian taking on Lake Belton. Midlothian pulling out the win over the previously unbeaten Lake Belton Broncos, 39-27. to And this is, this is really big because they are a team that had their eye on the prize of a district championship but like belton you might be going well i haven't really heard much about them they're a first year varsity program but i'll give matt step credit where credit is due going back earlier this season before the season ever start he said man you cannot sleep on this team and we kind of heard some rumblings about them being a legitimately good team they played that outlaw schedule before this but in their first varsity um season they had been one of the highest scoring offenses in 5a division one as a as a whole so it was quite impressive uh what midlothian has to do i think that they've put themselves in the driver's seat they've got two more games um to be able to check that box off but if they do it this would be the first district championship since 1984 so big things going on over there for midlothian um, and we appreciate their entire staff letting us broadcast that game on texanlive.com so um i want to go back to one thing i think earlier i said china spring and uh was the leader in three division Division one make that 4A Division one. I. I realized that I said that wrong and was thinking of Franklin and Lorena. We've been talking for four hours, so <laughs> there it is. Dorks, an unbelievable week nine lived up to every expectation that we had hoped. We will have much, much more breakdown about this on TFT on Monday. So we'll see you then.